Hey everyone, all right, let's get going with the uh, actual trait kernel for our vector edition here. So uh, I hope we made the font size big enough that it shows up well in the video, but let's get underway. So first thing we need, of course, is our standard import Triton, import Triton language. Oops, that's TL as usual, not tile. And we'll import Torch because we're gonna uh, do some comparisons to Torch just for both performance and then also for correctness. So uh, first thing we need to do for writing a kernel at our uh, Triton.jit here and then we'll um, just call this kernel vector uh, Let's just skip on this right now because uh, we're going to code the Python wrapper fun function first. So let's start with that. So this will be the actual vector addition. And we're taking two things in. Uh, our A, uh, if you recall from the toy model, we have our um, um, A pointer here, sorry, our A vector and uh, our B vector here. And we are returning the torch.tensor, which is the sum of A and B. So those are our inputs for the Python wrapper function. Um, first thing we need to do once this comes in is we need to make an output buffer, which is where we're going to store the additional the added result. So up a buffer buffer equals um, torch.empty like A. So we're just going to copy that. Um, we are making some assumptions that A and B are the same size here. Actually, we'll just add a couple quick asserts here. So first thing we want to assert is that A uh, is CUDA uh, and B is CUDA. Um, the output buffer is going to mimic whatever A is, so this will verify intrinsically the output buffer. So this confirms that everything's uh, our inputs and our output is going to be on CUDA, which we will need, obviously, uh, for Triton. Um, and then the other thing we want to get here is the number of elements so that we can determine our masking uh, and our block size. So let me save this. Um, so first thing we want to get is run elms, and that's just going to be a.numl gives us that. Um, we can do a basic check here that num elms equals to b dot num l, and we'll just leave ourselves up to do handle mismatch sizes. Uh, so that gives us our basic starting point here. Let me scroll this up. So what do we got? We've got our output buffer ready, our a and our b are ready. We've got a number of elements, and uh, now we need to start thinking about how are we going to uh, create a block size uh, to chunk up this problem. So if you recall back to the toy problem, uh, we're going to have each block will work on a subset or sub chunk of these vectors. Um, <clears throat> just for kicks, we're going to start with this uh, and we'll do a separate thing, I think, on the tuning portion of this. Uh, but regardless, let's just start here. So we need to make our grid and to do the grid, we're going to do, uh, we're going to need a ceiling division. So, Div, which will take the next int y int turns in it. <clears throat> and so this is going to basically let us uh, have a function to quickly chunk up uh, our task into uh, block size and create our grid. Um, there is uh, tl.cdiv, you'll see that quite a bit, uh, but we're not actually in a kernel, so we need to have our own uh, function here. So this is just going to be. Um, uh, x plus y minus 1 integer division over y. Basically, we want to force it upwards so that we always have an excess uh, amount of space relative to the work that we're doing. And that's basically what all that is for. So if you recall back to the original uh, video, uh, this would be for the last block where we're going to have a chunk. Uh, we always want to make sure that our uh, total block size exceeds uh, our actual work size. Um, so uh, that will give us this, and so we need to make our grid, uh, which is going to be actually your grid size. And that will use our seal the function we just made, and we need to pass in um, LMs, and we're going to divide that by our current block size. Now there is, uh, and the tutorial shows this, but I want to I'm purposely handwriting this out instead of using the more traditional there's meta parameters and we can have it uh, that way we can actually access indirectly the um, teal.cdiv uh, I want to leave that as a separate uh, thing to focus on so for now we're just doing everything by hand to make 
the process of what's really clear because I think the meta keywords end up throwing uh, people because the compiler is doing stuff that it's not obvious what it's doing. So anyway, so this will compute what? Our grid size based on our block size relative to our amount of work. So once we have our grid size, we need to our grid has to be a fixed uh, item. So let's just make this a tuple and that will give us our grid. And now we're ready to actually call our kernel. We have our in, uh, our two data elements going in and our out. <coughs> we have the total number of elements uh, and we have our block size we want to work with here. So this will be um, K2. So the actual Triton, uh, once we call the kernel, it will actually return some information that I'll show, I guess, in another video, but that's why I'm doing the K2. Technically, it's it's just um, information about what the kernel register spills and so forth, but uh, I just want to show that you do, in fact, have a return dictionary that you can work with for, again, more on tuning and so forth, but just to be aware that it is there. So we want to call our kernel. Uh, that was kernel vector addition. We need to pass in our grid, and then at that point, we can start passing in our actual parameters. So what are we going to pass in? Uh, we're going to pass in our A, which is representing our A pointer. We're going to pass in our B. We're going to pass in our <clears throat> output buffer, which is where we're going to store things. And now we're going to get down to uh, more of the implementation aspects. So we need to pass in our number of elements. And we need to pass in um, our block size from here. And once this is done, uh, we're not returning K2. We're, in fact, returning the output buffer. And this will give us our full kernel, or sorry, our full uh, wrapper function. So that will set up the grid. We'll call in. We're going to get A and B ready to go. We have a buffer, a number of elements. We have everything we need to start coding up our actual Triton kernel. So the A is really a pointer to the base of A. So uh, that's the first thing that's coming in. B is really a pointer to the start in memory of B. And we have our out pointer, which is start of the output buffer that we're going to store to. <laughs> and now we get into uh, the number of elements that are present. And here is an important distinction that is not actually present in the tutorial. You want uh, the number of elements to be a const expression. And what that means is that the compiler knows that this is fixed. It's not going to change. And it can do some additional um, optimizations. Uh, I did see a very tiny performance improvement. I was playing around with this earlier just by having that tl.const expression. And a separate kernel I was working on, uh, it was actually a big difference, like up to 13% improvement where it was a similar type of thing is actually a, a, a RMS norm kernel, but <laughs> simply ensuring that this things that are fixed are fixed and telling the compiler it's fixed with tl.const expression does let it optimize. In that case, it was up to 13% performance improvement uh, just by doing that. So I did want to call that out. Um, so what's our last element here? Num elements uh, are our block size, which will also be a const expression. Okay, so that gets us in with all the data we need to process this. Let's remove our pass. So first thing we want to understand is what block are we, basically? What is our program ID? Um, <clears throat> so to get that, we do TL the program ID, and we are on axis 0, which is the X axis in CUDA, if it were CUDA. Um, but anyway, it's basically um, the row. Uh, um, axis here, so that gives us our PID, and now using that PID, we need to start computing our offsets for where what chunk of the vectors are is this particular block uh, going to handle. So uh, we need to get our block start, and we're going to do that by using the PID, which is our block ID, times the size of a block. So this is block size. And to put this into context for the uh, kind of the mental model uh, video earlier, I remember we had um, seven elements and we had four blocks. So the math here would basically be uh, potentially pit zero times two, which of course would yield the block start of zero. And then we would have one times two, which would equal two. So the next one would start at two, uh, et cetera. So you see the point, but basically this is the math that gives you the offset to know where these threads are going to start, the threads in this block of this particular uh, instance are going to be executing. So that's how that works there. And using this, uh, we'll get our thread offsets. <clears throat> okay, uh, so the thread offsets are basically going to be block start for this particular uh, program ID, uh, plus tl.a range and zero to block size. So what we're doing is we're taking our starting point pointer from the A or whatever, shifting that over by the block that we are in this particular program instance, and then we're setting up um, 
a series of pointers, basically thread pointers for which individual element they're working on respectively. Um, so that gives us what we need here for thread offset. So we can go ahead and we're going to do two things. We need to load up the A and B uh, data. We need to actually um, add it and we need to store that back out and then we'll be done with the kernel here. Um, so with the thread offset, so we're going to say our A pointers, so pointer into A is tl.load and we need to do start at the A pointer at our thread offsets. Ah, we forgot something, our mask. Um, so that's, if you recall, we needed the mask because we don't have a guarantee that total number of uh, threads here is going to exactly match the number of data elements that we're working on. So mask is going to be thread offsets is less than num elms. And that will effectively block out, like back again, back to the first video. Uh, in this case, uh, that last block would only be working on element seven and element eight would be inert due to this mask here. Um, so anyway, uh, pass in our mask. Oops. And that will give us our A pointers, our B pointers, similar thing, except we start, of course, from the memory address of B and oops, plus the offsets mask equals mask. With that, we've loaded it, so our result is simply a plus b, um, not pointer. Oh, sorry, a pointers, b pointers. So all the threads in that block will execute uh, their respective um, loaded elements out of the res, and now we just simply need to return that back and store it. And the output buffer, um, which is going to be the pointer plus thread offsets, and we're storing res. Oops, must have missed something here. Thread offsets. Oh, out pointer. There we go. Uh, we are storing the result of this, and we need the same. Oops, jeez. Need to have the same mask uh, that we used earlier, and that should do it. Um, let me take a quick look through the code here. So everything looks good. Uh, one last point I want to make here, uh, just more for information uh, in terms of leveraging uh, the little bit of debugging aspect, is you do have available device print. It's a very simplistic print. It cannot do uh, F string formatting or anything like that, uh, but this will let you print out. If you just wanted to see, for example, uh, the current PID, um, <clears throat> you could do something like this, and that would actually print in your console when you're running, uh, so it can be helpful as a debugging tool. So we're not gonna use that right now. So that pretty much covers it. Uh, what we've done, uh, we have created our Python wrapper. This is what will be exposed to the programmer to actually run on their model. Um, and we have our A and B inputs coming in. We're returning an output, uh, which is the element-wise addition of the A and B uh, tensor or vector. And we basically created the output buffer, made some checks that were on CUDA, got the number of elements, uh, confirmed that they match in terms of element size. We just hard-coded for now a block size of 128. Um, the grid size, we computed that with our own little ceiling division function. And then we called the kernel itself using the grid that we made. Um, the A and the B, output buffer, number of elements, and block size. Uh, jump into the kernel here, and basically it's determine what instance we are based on this program ID. Compute our, do a little bit of pointer arithmetic to compute where we need to load from. Uh, that sets us up. We do our mask to make sure we're not going to access any incorrect memory, uh, larger, or no threads are we're going to work on uh, beyond the actual uh, amount of work we have to do. And then we do the load load for the different uh, A pointer, P pointers. And then we compute the actual what we want to do, the element-wise addition, and we store it in the output pointer uh, using uh, storing the result with the same offset and masking to make sure we're only writing to where we want to write. And that is a uh, vector addition kernel in Triton. So I think what I'll do is I'll stop the video here, and then I'll do a separate video. Uh, let's write out um, <coughs> a little bit of the benchmarking code so you can see how that works, and maybe do a little bit of uh, tuning, just kind of put everything together so, so for sort of a whole... Um, start to finish from mental model to actually coding the kernel to actually uh, testing and running out the kernel and we'll test it against uh, PyTorch for uh, speed and of course accuracy. So hope that helps and I will see you in the next video.